இந்த வீடியோவை வழங்குவோர் ஏஸ் டூ த்ரீ டெஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ல இருக்கும் லிங்கை கிளிக் செய்து ரூபாய் ஏழு லட்சத்தை வெல்லும் வாய்ப்பை பெறுங்கள் பிஹைண்ட் ஹவுஸ் டிவி பிஹைண்ட் ஹவுஸ் ஆரத்தை வந்து ஃபுட் அண்ட் லைஃப் ஸ்டைலுக்காகவே எக்ஸ்க்ளூசிவா பிஹைண்ட் ஹவுஸ் ஆஷ் அப்படிங்கிற புது சேனல் நவம்பர் ஃபோர்டீன் லான்ச் பண்றோம் இந்த சேனலோட லிங்க் டெஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் அண்ட் கமெண்ட் செக்ஷன்ல வந்து கொடுத்துருக்கோம் அந்த லிங்கை கிளிக் பண்ணி உடனே சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணி வச்சிருங்க இப்பவே சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணிட்டீங்கன்னா இந்த வீடியோ மிஸ் பண்ண மாட்டீங்க ஸோ இப்பவே பண்ணிடுங்க பொட்டன்ஷியல் இஸ் How's that? How's that? How's that? How's that? How's that? <laughs> And I think I did something like not out, not out, not out, not out, not out. What's your interaction with uh, Dhoni Bean? He's a, a very fascinating individual. I, I walk away from my career thinking about he's probably got one of the best cricket brains that I've seen in my time. I'll throw a couple of names in there for you like uh, a Shane Warne and a, a Darren Lehman. I'm not a big fan of soft signal. And Why? I think Atsi Dampai doesn't know whether he's out or not out. So he's going to soft signal. No. every ball between the umpires on the right. field and that could be anything from a thumbs up to the ball carried to two to go to <laughs> halfway in the over everything someone if there was one role that you want to completely eradicate out of the game what would that role be yeah it's a good question uh july 29 2007 do you remember this date the whole of india went against simon toffel that day what well, you're probably talking about uh, mr tendulka you're probably talking about trent bridge you're probably talking about 91 probably probably, probably. yes and the lbw division vanakkam nerkle inniki namma kuda join panikiradhu yaar nu paathina or strict officer is laughing at it welcome simon thank you so much for joining us Monica Makale Monica Makale So Simon Toffel is in India to launch his book Simon Toffel Finding the Gaps Well isn't it the case that uh, the beauty of batsmanship lies in you know finding the gaps but you have come up with this book Finding the Gaps I have oh, I have it's all about finding the gaps in terms of your performance gaps and trying to make sure that then what you can do is reduce that gap between where you are and what your potential is and so I really look to take all the my lessons and learnings from high performance sport at the elite level of cricket and trying to help every person who just wants to get better at what they do and see how I can help them. Before we go into finding the gaps, I'm going to put you through a tough session. It's not about cricket for sure. Okay. I'm going to find out how much you understand Tamil Nadu and the Chennai culture. There you go. Have you been to the Marina Beach? I've been to the marina. Yes, I think I've had dinner there one night. Beautiful spot. That's a quick answer. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Do you know the tala of Indian cricket? The king? The king? The king? Probably MSD if I had a guess. The king is Dhoni. He's called the Tala Dhoni. It's not just about Chennai or Tamil Nadu. The entire Indian cricket fraternity calls him Tala Dhoni. I just call him MSD. <laughs> It's simple. <laughs> Do you know who's the superstar of Tamil Nadu cinema industry the Hollywood So you might have to you might have to help me out there because I Okay I'm sure you must have known something about Bollywood Amitabh yeah. Bachchan Yeah the big B Big B brilliant <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Thank you Shahrukh Khan Nandri <laughs> Shahrukh Khan SRK SRK I actually saw SRK in the Caribbean Premier League recently right. turning up to see uh, his team play in Trinidad Good Yep And now come to Tamil Nadu. I'm probably going to have to say not out and pass. <laughs> right. His name is Rajnikant. 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 That's a mark for me. That's Thank you. Thank you. I I now leave this interview a lot more enlightened. <laughs> so I've learned something. I give you the book. <laughs> so you, that we you, all get enlightened. You give me some knowledge too. What's your interaction with uh, Dhoni Bean in those days of umpiring in Chennai during IPL? How has that been for you? Yeah, look, MS Dhoni is a, a very fascinating individual. I, I walk away from my career thinking about He's probably got one of the best cricket brains that I've seen in my time. I'll throw a couple of names in there for you like uh a Shane Warne and a, a Darren Lehman particularly for me coming through my career. Uh MSD what I have learned about him is his incredible composure, very confident in his own ability. Uh very strategic. Very much a thinker of the game. Those sorts of things combined with his composure uh make him an easy captain to talk to and work with. So by and large a lot of my experiences with MSD have been positive ones and been cooperative ones which makes it really easy for us as cricket players. The post day yeah. interactions with him. Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, quite a good sense of humor. Yep. Uh quite a fun guy to be around in that way but not that we mix too much with the players. But if I do have an offline conversation with him that's uh, unplanned and maybe just around the cricketing uh training 
environment, yeah, quite easy to talk to, a wonderful person. You know why I asked this question to you? Now you've got the applause of the Tamil Nadu audience. <laughs> you spoke so highly about Dhoni. Well, I'm just talking the truth. Talking about soft signal, I'm not a big fan of soft signal. And why? I think I've why? See, the umpire doesn't know whether he's out or not out, so he's going to soft signal. No, but he's, they, he's going upstairs for the third umpire, let me put it that way. They are, but the whole point of the soft signal is they are making a decision. They're going upstairs to say, I want to check, but if you can't tell me anything differently, my decision is out or it's not out. So they actually, through the soft signal process, at least they are making a decision. Because if they go upstairs with no signal, then the umpire is going to give the benefit of doubt to the batsman. If they go upstairs with a soft signal, at least they're making a decision. And then it's up to the third umpire to con find conclusive evidence to say that their soft signal decision is wrong and do something different. So the soft signal is actually a way for the on-field umpires to make a decision. And that's a good thing. When a five-time award-winning umpire says something, I just <laughs> need to listen to it. I can't counter <laughs> so much more than so this. So you've learned something today. Simon, if there was one role that you want to completely eradicate out of the game, what would that rule be? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I would like to probably get rid of leg buys. Why take a run when you don't hit the ball? Correct. It's a game between bat and ball. And why should the batting side benefit from not being able to hit the ball? And uh, maybe that's a, a change that will happen somewhere in the future. But in the, at the moment, it's in the laws of cricket. And here we are. And we'll crack on. But I think... You know, for me, game between bat and ball, if you're not good enough to hit the ball, why should you get runs? Are you happy that uh, the boundary countback rule has uh, is gone away from the rules book? Um, look, how do you have a tiebreaker? How do you? What's the best way of doing that? Everybody seemed happy with the, the countback rule with boundaries up until it happened. <laughs> the 2019 World Cup final? Yeah. Very a bit sad that New Zealand lost it that way? I, I think... What we should take away from that game was just a tremendous contest. You know, a tie in the, the main game and then a tie in the super over. You can't get closer than that. Uh, I think, obviously, the crowd really enjoyed the contest. I think it was a shame on the day there was a loser. But the way that New Zealand handled defeat and got so close and then killed, held their heads high and the way that they um, accepted defeat was just magnificent. And, uh, look, you know, what a great World Cup and a great way to finish. And I was lucky that I was right there watching that and covering privilege. that game. Privilege. It was, it was brilliant to watch. Simon, going forward about decision making no, from umpires. You have, you, know, you have made a lot of decisions. The Angelo Matthews won in the 2009 World T20. Yep. Ramnay Sawan hit the ball and Matthews came up with Trent the stunner. Bridge. Yes, yeah, remember. And you were there right in the middle. So those kind of things happen. Ball tampering, umpire suddenly does, sure. no, gets a bit tricky whether it's someone is using something the ball yep. so in such situations how does an umpire actually go to the other umpire there a square leg umpire or in case the straight umpire yep. what do you guys talk and how do you guys come to a conclusion okay this is how it has to happen well there's a bit of strategy in that process uh, going across to your mate at square leg or the other end is a way of buying some time and really just trying to slow the game down the umpire strategic timeout correct yeah we want to buy some time we want to really think about what are the options and by the time we get to our colleague, we want to be very clear about how they can help. So it's not a case of what did you see or, you know, do you think he's out? Do you think he's not out? It's probably more a question about fact, like did the ball carry? Or did you see something that I didn't see? Or what did you see? And so we're really trying to establish the facts. But it's about teamwork. It's about cooperation. Right. It also involves some trust. And how do we get it right? Because at the end of the day, the umpires are judged as a team. You know, and Thanks. together we need to get it right. Because very rarely do they say one umpire had a good game and one umpire had a poor okay. game. They'll talk about both the umpires together. And we need to be focused on team success about how we support each other. And you talked about soft signals before. There's a lot of soft signals every ball between the umpires on the right. field. And that could be anything from a thumbs up to the ball carried to two to go, to <laughs> halfway in the over, to that's one bouncer for the over, or you know that's off the pad, that's a leg by, or it's missed everything. <laughs> it's so missed there, everything. So there's lots of soft signals that we help each other out. So guys, from next time when an umpire does this, 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 everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, even this one, don't know. Don't know. <laughs> so if you see the open palms from an umpire at square leg after a delivery, 
I can't help you. I've got nothing. July 29, 2007. Do you remember this date? The whole of India went against Simon Toffel that day. Uh, well, you're probably talking about uh, Mr. Tendulkar. You're probably talking about Trent Bridge. You're probably talking about 91. Probably. 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 Yes, and the LBW decision. Sure. So how did you react? Because you came out in the open and said that you're disappointed that you gave yeah, a wrong decision. Sure. So how did you handle that situation? Uh, no differently to getting number 11 wrong as opposed to getting number four or five wrong in the team. Uh, every decision is important. Uh, I pride myself on making as many correct decisions as I could. And whenever you get one wrong, uh, it's a bit of a, a dint to that pride. And uh, the first thing that I had to do for myself and for those around me was to acknowledge that I made an error and own it and accept it. Talking about Tendulkar and sticking to Little Master Blaster. Yeah. Well, he has written the foreword for this book, Finding the Gaps. Did he actually remind you of that incident? No, he doesn't. Uh, and I think that's one of the interesting things about cricketers is they tend to move on from their mistakes a lot faster than, say, an umpire might. So for me, I remember basically all of my mistakes and all of my big mistakes particularly. But it's nice to be able, when I, was, I finished this book and I actually reached out to Sachin and I asked him, I said, look, you are a person that's seen a lot of my career. You're a person who's seen a lot of my work. Would you be kind enough to pen the foreword to my book and can I send it to you and would you mind having a read of it? And to his great credit, he said, sure. He said, what, what do you want? What do you need? I said, I'd love you to be able to look through it and if you think that it's worthy, if you think you can recommend it, would you mind doing that? He said, when would you like it back? I said, well, the next two weeks would be great. And to his credit, he said, look, I'll do it. And I, I count myself as privileged to be able to reach out to someone like Sachin to be able to ask him to, to do this on my behalf and for him to write what he wrote in that book. Uh, again, very privileged to be able to have that professional relationship with someone of his quality and stature in the game of cricket. And uh, I find uh, Ashwin's name, local yes. boy R. Ashwin has written, uh, has given his review for the book. Yes. So you have had a lot of interactions with Ashwin as well when you visit Chennai. Sure. So how, how is he as a cricketer? Because everyone thinks that, uh, you know, he, he he thinks the sport he takes the sport in a different way sure he talks cricket in a different manner he thinks in a different manner he comes out like yep. he does a lot of out of the box things that yeah, people yep. really don't you know go that way but that's, ashwin does it but that's part of the beauty of the game is that we're all different and we all think a bit differently and we've all got our own strategies and styles and techniques and you know in terms of technique you've only got to look at steve smith recently and say well how could we replicate that technique you probably couldn't and you wouldn't be coaching it and you wouldn't be training it. And I think what's really important and one of my key messages in the book is to be yourself and to be the best version of yourself. And how do you do that? Because if you try to be an Ashwin, if you try to be an MS Dhoni, if you try to be a Sachin Tendulkar, you're not being yourself. And so I try to offer a lot of those learnings and those tips and those tools to actually help you be the best you can be. And what can you learn from what, what we've done? And sure, there's probably something you can learn from Ashwin. There's something you can learn from... Sachin, and there's hopefully there's something you can learn from me about what it took to be number one in my field, because getting to the top is hard, and staying there is harder. So a lot of uh, going through this book, I found that a lot of things are for the management guys. You know, it's about life management, a life lesson kind of a book. It's for your brother, it's for your sister, it's for your mother, your father. It's, it's not about umpiring decisions for sure. No, I mean, <laughs> you, if you look at some of the chapter names, and, and they're really the transferable skills. So things like. Uh, adapting, um, positive attitude, coachability, perfectionism, traits of a top team. And I really like the last one, the one before the last, use by date. Use by date. Because I often get asked all the time, why did I leave umpiring? So I thought I'd exactly. devote a chapter to that saying that everybody has a use by date. And I left for personal and professional reasons. And so that's covered in that chapter. How much of an impact did the Lahore terror attack have on you? And how much was that a reason for this finding the gaps? So the chapter's called The Hardest Call I've Had to Make, which was a phone call. It wasn't an LBW decision like Sachin's or it wasn't a court behind. It was ringing home after the terrorist attack and actually talking to my wife and trying to explain to her that a terrible event had happened, that I was okay and don't worry. And it was quite an emotional phone call and experience that we went through. What it did for me was it really put the perspective of life purely on the table in front of me and made me realise that all I'm doing here is umpiring game of cricket. 
and a terrible events just happened where my driver's lost his life. All he was trying to do was to go to work, take us to work. Can you narrate that incident? No, because I have heard this before from you, but I want you to again reiterate no, how difficult was it when it was going on and you were no, sitting right under the Well, I'd encourage chair. people to read it and to relive it, but you know, going through that experience was traumatic. It was different. It's something that you just can't prepare for. And you know, when you're on the ground in the, in the sort of the crouched up position and you've got these bullets hitting your van and you just don't know whether one of them's got their name on it for you, you a lot of thoughts go through your mind and you think about things differently. You think about riding home, you think about making a phone call, you think about, is today my last day? And for some of us it was. And a lot of us, uh, it, it did change our perspective on life. And some of us didn't walk away from that experience. And, and we're human. And, and part of the reason for writing that chapter is about getting people to connect with the fact that umpires are human. We have thoughts, we have feelings, we have dreams. And we see things differently. We, we, we experience the same event and we see things differently. So if you can imagine being on the floor of that van as, as bullets hit our van, we're all heads down on the floor. And all of a sudden the side of the door or the van opens up and talking to Steve Davis about this after the incident and Steve and I recount that incident and, and I said so Steve what was going through your mind when that door opened he said I thought they'd come in to finish us off I thought they'd come in to shoot us and and kill us and my take on that same event was that I thought they were coming in to save us I thought someone was actually coming to save us before we uh, sign off now one last question which I want to actually ask you is Sure. Which Indian cricketer's appeal has really irritated you or no, has made you laugh like anything in the dressing room? Shri Santh, Shri <laughs> Santh comes Santh. to mind. Uh, <laughs> there's a wonderful clip uh, out of a Cape Town test match where he's appealed against Jacques Callas and I've actually got the video still on my laptop because I use it as a training example. And there must have been seven or eight appeals for an LBW off Shri. And, uh, How's it like? <laughs> <laughs> how's that? How's that? How's that? How's that? How's that? <laughs> And I think I did something like, not out, not out, not out, not out, not out, not out. <laughs> and, you know, strictly by the laws and the playing conditions and the code of conduct, you know, you could say that's just unacceptable. But I saw the lighter heart of the moment and I handed Shri his cap and I just said, look, Shri, mate, one appeal's enough. The match referee can only record one appeal, not seven. Um, but yeah, look, so he's, he's larger than life and, and that's part of the joys and the differences that I was just talking about that... Uh, we can enjoy a light-hearted moment and um, thankfully the decision was right and that's all that matters. It's been great, Simon, having you here. Nandri. It's Guys, this is Finding the Gaps by Simon Toffel. Please uh, share your wishes and uh, you know, congratulatory messages to Simon in the comment section. Simon, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining Thanks. us. Super. Have Good a great up. day ahead. Yeah. Thank you. In the video, we will go to S23. In the description, click on the link to 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 the link to